forecast for Wednesday, May 29th. Okay, so we have the moon in Aquarius energy going void, of course, at 10.21 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're locking into Pisces energy at 8.34 p.m., so quite a chunk of time there where the moon is going to be void. We have plenty of aspects popping off while the moon is void, so there's a lot of shakiness, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of instability for that particular period of time. Now, of course, with the moon in Aquarius, we've been emotionally detached in order to see the greater, grander picture, especially where we have room to be better, room to make improvements, room to actually collapse the obstacles, the struggles, the limitations that we're becoming very aware of as we try to move forward. And where it is that we, again, have the opportunity to try something new, to get a totally different result. Well, the transition from the Aquarius energy into the Pisces energy is always a very intense one, mostly because we did have that emotional detachment while the moon was in Aquarius energy. And of course, Pisces energy is all about the feels. So we kind of do a deep dive into our feels, into our intuition, into our dreams, and our ability to see where it is within ourselves. We need to grow, we need to heal, we need to bring something to an end, to a closure point in order for us to begin again. Pisces energy being the very last sign of the zodiac, it is where there is a release and purge needed in order to actually free up the time, the energy, the space, the attention to build something new. Again, from the higher self, from our intuition, from our karmic contracts. So we have 12 different aspects taking place here today. Nine of them are going to involve the moon. We also have a pretty interesting slash hectic slash impulsive slash edgy type of energy taking place here today. That being between Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money. Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passions, our desires. And Chiron, the wounded healer. So we'll definitely dive into that. It is going to start popping off midday here. Uh, but outside of all of the moon energies, these guys, this trio, definitely the star of the show here today. Definitely going to test us in a lot of different ways, especially where emotional and energy management is concerned. So keep that in the back of your mind. Okay, so with that being said, we kick the day off with the moon in Aquarius energy, making a very positive interaction with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, ruling over roles, responsibility, system structures, foundations, willpower, and discipline, who's in this Pisces energy. Again, trying to wrap up a 30-year cycle, trying to deconstruct the old structures, the old foundations that the old version of self built, trying to bring an ending, a closure to some limiting beliefs, to some delusional confusion, if you will, and we are definitely trying to focus on what we could build in the place of the things that are not as safe, as secure, as stable, as strong as we need them to be. Now, this particular interaction is going to bode very well for us. Saturn being the traditional ruler over the Aquarius energy, there is an intensity here. This is a positive interaction, which means that we are starting to see, again, emotionally detached, acting as the observer from the higher self. We're starting to see what it is that we could do differently, what it is that we could build, create, bring to life especially where new routines are concerned, new belief structures are concerned, new goals, new visions, new dreams are concerned. And again, we have to focus on, yes, the big picture, Aquarius energy, very visionary, the Pisces energy, very mystical, very imaginative, very creative, and understanding where it is that we have to bring that big vision back into the present moment understand what we have power and control over here in this present moment to actually align with the greater grander vision that again we're starting to piece together and we're looking to manifest the moon then gets into the boxing ring squares off with mercury mercury rules over the mental plane ruler of information communication how it is that we express ourselves. he's in his rulership over gemini season and he is definitely our headspace our headspace is in taurus energy a little bit fixed if i do say so myself we have tunnel vision we're not really open to changing our mind, to changing our perspective, to changing the course in which we think we should be walking. There's a little 
little bit of stubbornness that comes with a fixed earth sign, such as Taurus. We are definitely starting to see the challenge that is arising for us to change our mind, for opening up our mind to new methods, new ways of doing things, new ways of getting to where it is that we want to go. But there's a resistance. There's a hesitancy here. The moon in Aquarius has the futuristic vision. It is hopes and wishes and dreams for our futuristic selves. Mercury, on the other hand, we are so stuck in this present moment that we can't see the forest past the trees. So our heart space, again, the moon, our head space, Mercury, they're not on the same page. One is projecting too far in the future and the other one is too fixated on the present moment. So again, we are definitely feeling the disconnect between our heart and our head. The moon is then going to sextile Mars, though, and then Chiron. Here's the beginning of this little kerfuffle story that I kind of briefly mentioned at the opening of this forecast. We start off with some good vibes. The moon in Aquarius sextiling, which is merging of an energy with Mars, the god of war ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desire. He's in his rulership in this Aries energy. There is an underlying frustration, agitation, impulsivity, kind of ants in our pants, pushing us to want to take action and make moves. However, we've been in a state where the only action, the only moves that we're making are in our inner realm to kind of cultivate a new passion, excitement, desire, motivation, determination, and also to avoid acting on impulse, to avoid throwing tantrums, to avoid projecting aggression onto other people and out into the world. Lucky for us, this is a positive interaction. So we're starting to build again, excitement, inspiration, motivation, determination to actually move forward towards the big picture vision that again, the moon in Aquarius is helping us to formulate. The interaction, the sextile with Chiron is a boost in our confidence. It is a boost in our awareness that we have what it takes to kind of grow through what it is that we're going through, that we can overcome some of the challenges in which we're being faced to actually move on, not only in a new path, in a new direction, but to move on in the building and anchoring of this new version of self, of this new identity, of this new want, need, and desire to do things in life with more meaning, more mission, more purpose. The moon is then going to square off, get in the boxing ring with Uranus. Now Uranus is the modern day ruler over the Aquarius energy. So there's a little bit of intensity here. And also this is the last aspect that the moon is going to make before going void, of course. So it kind of sets the tone for what we're going to be experiencing while the moon is void. Now, a square doesn't feel good. It's not supposed to. It's supposed to highlight the tension and conflict that we're experiencing in trying to make a move and trying to grow. And so the growing pains are very real. And this particular interaction is putting us in a state of confusion because, again, if this was a positive interaction, we would be receiving insight, aha moments, clarity, if you will, on what we could be doing differently, where we could pivot where we should be adopting a new mindset, a new path, a new direction. But this is a square, which means that we're closed off to that. We're not seeing the path forward. Not, we're not seeing the clarity. We're not seeing the details, the information needed in order for us to feel like we're making a well-informed decision, especially we're pivoting away from what it is that we thought we were pursuing onto a new path where a new mission, new goals, new dreams are being created each and every single day with these new levels of awareness. So you best believe that this is going to create some anxiety in our physical form, that this is going to be a jolt of energy that we're going to have to manage very, very carefully so that we don't like lose our shit and project our frustrations and restlessness and confusion out into the world. But at the same time, this is going to help us be illuminated to the differences, to the choices, to the options, to the disconnect, to the detachment that we need to observe. Because again, we're in Gemini season. So the whole point of Gemini season here is to explore the extremes in order for us to kind of meet ourselves in the middle of these extremes and find a new middle point, find a new common ground. So this is the point where the moon goes void, of course. And while the moon is void, here we have Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in this Gemini energy, very, very torn, very indecisive on what she wants, who she wants, what she needs, who she needs, what she desires, who she desires. This has a lot to do with relationships, 
has a lot to do with finances. Venus is going to semi-square, so creating tension and conflict with first Mars, the masculine counterpart to her feminine divine energy, and then to Chiron, the wounded healer. And you best believe that there is no healing with this particular aspect. We're exposing all of the wounds. So let's talk about it. First of all, this is going to really show us the, I'm going to say, extreme polarized dualistic nature of the differences between us and the world around us, the people around us. And if you're really self-aware, the differences, the detachment, the extreme polarities within ourselves, where it is that there's a tug of war going on. Power struggle, again, Pluto is retrograde in Aquarius energy. That is supposed to be helping to illuminate where it is that the power struggle within ourselves is alive and well, where it is that we do have to kind of examine our self-sabotaging behaviors and where it is that we can rewrite that particular programming to actually empower ourselves. So first of all, Venus interacting with Mars, there is this conflict, this difference, this detachment, if you will, between the feminine and masculine energies within us and how they play out in our relationship dynamics. You involve Chiron, you best believe we're getting triggered, we're getting activated, in a way that puts us in a situation to see how far away we are to being on the same page with the people around us. This is a differences in our wants, our needs, our desires. This is a difference in our approach to trying to reconcile our differences. This is division at its finest, and it's definitely going to stir the pot, so to speak, in relationship dynamics. Now, does that mean that we should be stirring the pot? Well, I would say, you know, if you don't feel like you're being heard or seen or valued, then of course you got to boss up and draw the line in the sand and stand up for yourself. But at the same time, with this kind of conflicting energies, I would do my best to just step back, step back and observe. That's the only way that we're going to kind of see the aha moments. It's the only way that we're going to see people's true colors. It's the only way that we're going to see ourselves and our opportunity to boss up into a new level of empowerment to make sure that, you know what, we're handling our own shit. And if people are coming at us, then we have the choice whether we're going to react from ego or respond from higher self. So we have to be very careful with this particular energy. Now, here's the thing. It's going to make us edgy and temperamental and impulsive. We're, we're literally waiting to be attacked whether you understand that or not, like we're waiting for the ball to drop. We're waiting for someone to come at us. We're waiting for this trigger and this activation. The Chiron energy needs to expose the wounds in order for us to acknowledge them, in order for us to actively try to heal them. You best believe that there's going to be this temper mentality where everybody is just on edge waiting for the ball to drop. And again, that edginess, if you don't have control over your emotions or your mental plane, this could definitely lead to a volatile situation, which of course we all want to avoid. Now, adding a little bit of fuel to that fire, shortly thereafter, we have Mars coming up to, bumping into, conjuncting with Chiron. So here we have Venus kind of, you know, interacting with Mars and then Chiron in a very uncomfortable way to expose the wounds, to expose the differences. And then Mars and Chiron team up. So here's the thing. We have the ability, because again, a conjunction is just as much as an ending as it is a beginning. We have the ability to close the door on the restlessness, on the edginess, on the differences. We have the ability to close the door on our anger, our frustration, on our triggers, on our activations. We do have the ability to do that. We also have the ability to tap into the highest form of this particular energy. And if we use it in the proper way, if we tap into our creativity, if we tap into our passions, our desires, our excitement, we do have the ability with Mars and Chiron kind of working together for us to have a little bit of a state of ease. What does that mean? It means that we might not only be learning from the dysfunction of the differences that got illuminated for us, not only would we have the passion, the warrior type of spirit to grow, to heal, to improve through those particular, let's call them activations and triggers, but even more than that, we have the ability to actually like align with a mission, align with a purpose, have the opportunity to maybe take the lead, take action 
to be the example of who it is that you want to be and be the example of the change in the world that you want to see. And so let me just be very clear here. It is very hard to be the better person. It is very hard to take the higher road sometimes. But this is the test that we're in. Again, we're in the year of eight. It's time to walk the walk and talk the talk and have our, you know, power where our energy, our emotions, our mental plane is concerned. And so this could definitely put us in a higher observation point to see where we can be the bigger, better person, where we can take the higher road, where we can lead ourselves into healing, where it is that we can close the door and put some of these triggers and activations behind us. Now, let me just say this, this can be a very powerful time to release some of these suppressed energies, but do so very carefully, because here's the thing about releasing. You could throw a tantrum, throw a shit show, scream, cry, punch a couple of things. That is a release. You do feel better after you do all of those horrible things in that toxic way. There is a release energy there. Or you could release it in a way where you're taking a deep breath and you're understanding that the lower egoic programming wants you to lose your shit, wants you to throw a tantrum, wants you to be toxic, wants you to project all of that out in the world. And you have the ability by acting as the observer and aligning with the higher self to say, you know what, I'm going to do better than that. You take a deep breath, you visualize all of your activations, your frustrations in a beautiful white light ball and you throw it out to the universe and you ask the universe to handle it. You ask the universe to alleviate you from this suppressed energy, this tension, this frustration, this aggravation. So either way, there's going to be a major releasing purging point. There's going to be an element where we're ready to kind of tackle the issues head on and we're ready to kind of do what we have to do to build ourselves up to understand that we have choice points. And we have the ability to allow ourselves to be the bigger, better person, to take the higher road. We also have the ability to be the egoic reactor tantrum thrower as well to create chaos and confusion, not only in our lives, but in the lives of the people around us. So we have a big choice point on how we're going to allow this energy to actually manifest. The moon in this Aquarius energy, now void, of course, going to semi-square the North Node in Aries energy. So again, the North Node in Aries energy, trying to get us on the right path, trying to get us on the path that's going to lead us to our soul's mission, our soul's potential, trying to show us the ability to grow, to heal, to progress ourselves and moving forward. Well, this is a semi-square, which means that we're not seeing the growth. We're not seeing the healing. And especially coming out of the very tricky energy in which I just kind of, you know, described, we aren't going to feel very good about the prospects of moving forward. We may know that we want to move forward, but we might not know how to do that. We may not know how to grow from this energy, grow from these interactions. We might not know how to heal from this particular trigger or activation as well. And so again, we're having a hard time seeing that greater, grander vision. We're very much stuck in the moment and that creates a disconnect for that moon in Aquarius. So the last aspect that the moon in Aquarius is going to be making while still void, of course, is actually a positive interaction with Neptune. Neptune, of course, in his place of power in this Pisces energy. This is a little bit of a reminder, again, where we have the power when operating from our higher self, operating from our intuition, operating from our heart space to understand why we're being tested and challenged in the ways that we currently are and it's to override the egoic programming. It, this is a reminder of our goal, our vision, our dream, of our ability to heal and grow through what it is that we're going through. This is a reminder that yes, things can get very overwhelming, especially emotionally speaking, but that we don't have to constantly avoid and use escapism in order to run away from our problems. This is a, a time for us to do better to improve, to be better. That's what that Aquarius energy is all about. And so at 8.34 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the moon shifts into Pisces energy. So this is when we're going to feel all the feels. It is very soothing. It is a water energy. It's a mutable water energy. We're in a mutable uh, zodiac sign being in Gemini season. And so change is upon us. 
and change happens very quickly, very rapidly, and especially in Pisces energy, think of all the changes, all the different forms that water goes through. You can go through a very calm state where you know the scenery is mirrored off of the reflection of the water. You could have a really choppy water. You could have a streaming water. The point that I'm getting here is, is that our, our emotions, our energy, has to take on different forms in order for us to cleanse ourselves, purify ourselves from the heaviness, from the weight, to heal and change and transform ourselves from the heaviness and the weight into something lighter, into something better. And then to reassure ourselves that again, the karmic chapters, the tough love life lessons that we're currently dealing with, that we do have the ability to have the upper hand over them when we tap into the right kind of energies. So the moon in Pisces energy is then going to get in the boxing ring square off with Jupiter. Jupiter's the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, blessings. He's fresh in this Gemini energy. And this is going to be a tension point for a couple of reasons. So let's talk about the fact that first of all, we have Pisces energy is a water sign. Gemini energy is an air sign. They're both mutable energy. So we're looking to change. We're looking to transform. We're looking to improve. Problem is, is that Jupiter tends to magnify whatever state we're in. And right now with the moon shifting and Pisces energy, it's a little bit overwhelming. We feel a little bit, I'm going to say, uh, triggered and activated coming from all different angles. We feel a little bit, I'm going to say, heavy and weighted with the emotions in which we're feeling. We aren't as aligned with our higher selves, we're, with our intuition as we would like to be. And because the Pisces energy is about hopes and wishes and dreams and visions and imagination and creativity and karma, there is a conflict here because the Gemini energy is very rooted into the ego. It is, again, the lower level of our intellect and very much rooted and anchored into proof evidence of our materialistic realm. So again, the hope, the faith, the wishes, the goals, the dreams that are coming from the moon in Pisces is not being well interpreted and well understood through the mental plane. Jupiter in this Gemini energy, the goal is to blend our intuition with our intellect, is to blend our wisdom with our knowledge. And at this particular point, Jupiter and Gemini is too anchored into the physical realm for the moon in Pisces to actually feel healed and I'm gonna say supported in our goals, in our visions, and in our dreams. So we're not as optimistic about our goals and visions and dreams as we currently were. We are not as confident as we need to feel within ourselves. This is definitely the releasing and purging stage that is needed before we're going to gain bigger, broader perspectives and insight, bigger clarities on where it is that we need to be going from here. So the last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in this Pisces energy making a positive interaction with Pluto, the great transformer himself, retrograde in this Aquarius energy. You want to talk about a major shift in mood and attitude and energy? This is it. This is a boss up energy. We are not sitting in that uncomfortability between you know the moon and Jupiter for very long this is like us realizing where it is that yeah we're doing a deep dive in our fields but we're very divided on what that actually means to us what we're confused on what we need to do with that particular energy Pluto is here to boss us up to empower us to show us that we're being tested and triggered and activated in order for us to rewrite the egoic programming Again, Pluto being retrograde in this Aquarius energy, we need to break free from all of the heavier weight, the heavier thoughts, the heavier emotions, the roadblocks of the egoic programming. So this is, a, again, a reminder that as long as we're able to act as the observer and rise up into the higher version of self, we're going to be able to see the conflict taking place not only within us, but within our interactions as well, very clearly. And we're going to see where it is that we have the ability to boss up into new levels of consciousness, awareness, and understanding to nip this particular negative programming in the bud.